I'm taking what I learned over the years about harvesting random EM energy fields and constructing some apparatus on top of the barn for energy collection. The time had just come for me to change an old setup I had. It's time for the antenna array to come down. This has been up over four years and it's developed a little problem. This tree you see there has been growing pretty good. And it's now grown right up into the wire and it's causing a grounding out effect. So it's going to come down. I'm not going to try to move it. I'm just going to take it down and try something over on the barn roof. That grounding out effect from that tree has really reduced the power on this uh, antenna energy receiver. It just it reduced it so they're just kind of dim right now, the LEDs. I probably wouldn't even be able to run that little motor. That tree really grew this spring, and it's grown right up into the antenna wires, and just everything has been reduced. So what we're going to do is going to take this all out, and the wires are coming down. Well, it looks like it's going to be a mess to straighten them out. But I know I'll be able to use them for another project. This is what I call a insulated ground. It's a sealed up PVC pipe with a layer of aluminum flashing on the inside and I filled it up with dirt too. And I'll put a cap on here. And this will act as a ground too. And this ground will act like a capacitor with the ground. I'll just cover that up. Wire comes out just below that cap but I'm not going to bury it anymore next I don't want water to be up and around that wire so I'm also going to have some other grounds I'm working with this one down here is a magnesium rod uh, last year I put an earth battery in a magnesium carbon it was carbon filter carbon block filter earth battery and it worked pretty good for most of the winter and then it started to decrease and it was because the connection corroded up see I need to keep this above the dirt here too I'm gonna have to change this a little bit but this is a I dug the magnesium up I just stuck it in there up right now I need to keep this connection out of the dirt I'll have to put a cup or something around that and I, this other wire I got going in here, this is the magnesium, and this is for the carbon block filters that I was using for the positive. The magnesium was a negative, and this will be the insulated ground, and this white other wire got here goes down to the pond, so I also got another ground pound it in down by the pond I'll take a quick look at that and this is where I have my pond ground located it's a good wet ground I wanted to experiment with that some more it's on the north end of the pond in the other video when I was looking for toric currents I had one down on the south end and this is a standard eight foot ground rod that you'd use for your house or service 
and I just got it connected with a 14 gauge wire just laying on top of the ground up back to the barn and it's in the ground let's see there's an eight foot rod and it's probably in the ground about six six foot eight maybe but it was good wet ground and then I just have the wire laying on top of the ground and heading back up towards the barn this is the completed structure and now I'll go on up and take a closer look now this is mostly made with just scrap lumber I ripped up on the table saw and it's treated with vinegar like I was showing in those other videos and I was doing my best to keep it insulated from the grounding effect so this is a PVC conduit uprights and just poly rope to hold it steady and like I did in the other videos collectors energy collectors I ran some uh, pickup wire this is bare copper 24 gauge pickup wire down along the wood I ran one strand of that uh, 24 gauge copper pickup wire on each piece of wood I just stapled it, kind of zigzagged it, stapled it right to the wood. And this other wire you see stretching across between these two uh, wood pieces is some galvanized wire. I went along the whole structure and did that. It didn't help anything, but I just wanted to cover all the bases to see if that would pick up any more energy. Nothing else happened with that, so I don't need it on there. But anyway, that's what's on there, and that's what you see. And I just got some framing structure, PVC, half-inch cross braces there. And that's just some wood frames I mounted to the roof to set the PVC conduit in. And I got them all just braced down with some eye hooks into the roof. And on the south end of the barn here, I got everything tied into one bolt, each copper wire and that galvanized wire. And I got everything running down this feed wire, and I'm trying to keep it away from the grounding effect of the building, just for those uh, standoffs here. And it's for an antenna wire. And this is the outside looking up. And it's 23 feet to the peak. And like a PVC conduit is another 5 feet. And that top board is another foot above that. So it's about 29 feet up to that very top board from the ground. But you got five feet of insulated structure between the grounding effect of the building and up to the framework. And it's found out that's very important to keep that insulated from the grounding effect. This whole building is grounded just with the wood down to the dirt. So it's going to have the same grounding effect as if this was a big hill. And with that insulated PVC pipe keeping that framework up higher, it really changes the output. Not that there's a lot of output. I guess the biggest output I notice up there is probably the wind. You can change it a lot by just having that grounding effect eliminated as much as possible. The length of this wooden barn antenna is a little over 50 feet. And compared to that wire one I had stretched out between the barn and the house, and that was like 150 feet to the tallest peak. It was multi-strand wire. There's a lot of wire in that. Probably have less output on this one, but hopefully be enough to light a few LEDs. And I think I'm pretty much out of the effects of that high voltage power line to the north. I'm about 75 yards from the wire. So I think I'm out of the effects of that pretty much. So we'll go see what we're getting now out of this new 
wooden antenna. So I got the meter ready. I have the lead in right here and four different grounds we can check. Uh, I'll have to hold the camera right up to the meter because we got that glare problem again. But the voltages are all pretty much the same on each one of these grounds. There's nothing, anything significant different. The first one I'm going to test is this is the insulated ground and 60 volts 60 volts ac the next one i'm going to test is the carbon block filter ground and we got, we got 61 on that one 61 volts ac the next one is the solid core one is the pond ground the wet one and that one we got 61 volts and the next one we got is the magnesium ground and we have 61 volts on that one so the insulated ground is like a volt less but otherwise they're all pretty much the same and uh, the frequency was a little bit different for each one too. I can run through them. But there was something else I wanted to show because this magnesium ground in the pond ground made a earth battery. Now we'll check out these frequencies because each one was just a little bit different. This is the insulated ground and eight kilohertz, 7 kilohertz. The next one will be the carbon block filter ground. Um, 7, 6, 7 kilohertz. Next will be the pond ground. And that one's a little higher. 9, 10 kilohertz, probably because the wire is longer laying on the ground. And the magnesium ground. And that's around 70 kilohertz. But I want to check something out here with that uh, earth battery because I thought it was kind of interesting. I think other people might find it interesting too. Hook up. This will be the DC voltage of the magnesium ground and the wet pond ground. So that's 1.3 volts DC. And that, that wire is probably about 100 yards. The grounds are about 100 yards apart. And 1.3 volts, that's a magnesium ground. I should check the current on that too, but that's kind of... Um, and this is it. Check that. Current on the magnesium earth battery actually getting actually getting milliamps up about two milliamps it seems like it charges up let me disconnect it and then touch it again quick and it seems to charge up maybe because it's just a, a slow reaction to the ground I don't know Touch it again. I thought that was kind of interesting. It's like it's charging up and then will discharge and when you connect it together. In the configuration I got hooked up right now. I got the lead wire coming in, hooked up to full bridge rectifier. This is one I had put together. I think I had it, this is the one I was using under the power line, the first experiment. And I got it hooked up to ground right here. This is actually 
grown to the pond and I have it feeding some LEDs. See what's going on. I could probably shut the light off in here and see if it's a little bit brighter reach over. And that's the light they're giving off. So uh, it's not focusing right now. You have to get a little close. You know. Well, they're giving off light. It's probably about as bright as those ones I had down in the garage when it was getting partly grounded out by that tree. I don't know why that would focus. Anyway, that's the what I got going on in this configuration. I'll be doing a lot more experimenting with it. The energy that's coming off this wooden antenna is behaving a little different than what was coming off that long wire antenna that I took down. Uh, so I wasn't able to get a reliable reading on the power going through those LEDs. I got four LEDs in a series and when I hooked my meters up to them to test you know, voltage and uh, current, I'm getting AC and DC both at the same time. It's kind of like the diodes aren't really working, that uh, bridge rectifier diodes or something doesn't seem to be working. I tried different diodes on the long wire antenna. The germanium diodes always work the best. And right now I got these uh, thousand volt silicone diodes hooked up, but I'm not sure what's going on. There's something a little more to look into there. I have maybe there's a higher voltage than what the meters can read, more like a static voltage. It's going through bypassing the diodes or something. I have some 2000 volt fast recovery diodes I was using up by the power line. I might try something like that. But anyway, there's something more to look into there because it's acting a little strange. And with the frequencies that are coming off it, I think I'm, it's just a static. I connected up my crystal radio to it and I can't tune into any station. It's loud and clear static, but there's nothing to tune into. A couple spots on the coil where everything became silent, but then the rest of it is just static. So I think that's kind of, it's just receiving all kinds of uh, frequencies, I think. But, you know, like on the long wire antenna, I could receive radio stations. I could pick it up on my crystal radio, but here I couldn't get anything. So it's pretty much, I think, just a bunch of static that's being received. Uh, I couldn't isolate anything different than that. With that insulated ground that I showed putting in, that was something I was using on my long wire antenna system. I discovered if I use that, there's a way I could connect two long wire antenna systems in a series and get more voltage if I wanted to do that. And also since it isn't directly connected to the ground, I think it was safer from lightning strikes. And I'll probably continue to use that here too. And so I'm going to keep experimenting and I'll catch up with you later. Thanks for watching.